In an earlier learning outcome, we were looking at the phase diagrams for steel, and we see an example of the phase diagram for steel here. We see different regions on this phase diagram. We see the austenite phase, which is where our steel has a face centre cubic structure. Recall that when we heat the steel, it turns from body centre cubic to face centre cubic. We had our alpha region over here on the left hand side, which is body centre cubic steel. And on the far right hand side, when the carbon content increases, we have our cementite, Fe3C. Now when we looked at these diagrams, we talked about different compositions of steel, and we talked about something called the eutectoid composition. And the eutectoid composition is when the steel has 0.77% carbon. Any composition with less carbon, we called hypoeutectoid steel, and any composition with more, we called hypereutectoid steel. And the important thing about eutectoid compositions was that when we called the eutectoid steel, it went into layers of iron and iron carbide, or iron and cementite. And we ended up with a laminar structure with alternating layers of iron and iron carbide. Now this phase diagram holds true, providing we call the material slowly. So if we take a eutectoid composition of steel at 0.77% carbon, and we call it from the austenitic state, or the face centre cubic state, below the eutectoid temperature, then it would form layers of iron and iron carbide as long as we called the material slowly. And recall that that iron-iron carbide combination was called perlite. Now in this video we're going to look at a heat treatment process that actually changes the nature of the way the material cools. So on this diagram, rather than allowing the material to cool slowly, we have a time dependent variable. So on our x-axis here, we have time in seconds. It's a logarithmic scale, so we go from 1 second to 10 seconds to 100, 1000, 10,000 and so on. So we see an increase in the cooling time. And on our y-axis, we have the temperature. So as an example, if we was going to go from 800 degrees to 100 degrees in just one second, then it would appear something like this on our diagram. So the diagram specifies rates of cooling. So also marked on here, we have our eutectoid temperature, which we know to be 727 degrees C. So what we're talking about here is the cooling for a eutectoid composition of steel. So we heat our steel above its eutectoid temperature and it turns to face centre cubic structure. And if we was to allow that piece of material to cool very slowly, then it would cool something like this over a prolonged period of time. And at the bottom of the diagram, we see which different phases we end up in. So there we had slow cooling and we see that we're in the complete perlite stage. So that correlates with the previous diagram that we looked at. If we call that material slow enough or over a long enough period of time, then all of the material forms perlite. But let's go back and look at the alternative. This time, let's call our material from the eutectoid temperature of 727 degrees down to 200 degrees in around five seconds. Now the process of cooling the material rapidly is called quench cooling and we can quench in water or we can quench in oil. So imagine we have a hot piece of material and we place it into a very cold container of water or oil, then that heat is going to dissipate very quickly. And that has an impact on the structure of the material. What we end up with is a structure called martensite. And we'll talk a bit more about martensite in a moment. So we've seen two extremes. We allow the material to cool very slowly and we get perlite, which corresponds with the phase diagram that we saw previously. Alternatively, we quench cool the material very quickly and we end up with this new structure called martensite. Now, if we opt for something in between, this time we're going to go from our eutectoid temperature to 150 degrees in 100 seconds. That's going to bring us down here. And we see we're going to get a mixture of martensite and perlite. 
If that cooling took place in around 12 seconds, we would have more martensite and less perlite. And if that cooling took place in say 500 seconds, we would have more perlite and less martensite. So it's proportional depending on the rate of cooling. So we have three options. We can cool the material slowly and we get perlite. We can cool the material relatively slowly and we get a combination of martensite and perlite. Or we can cool the material very quickly and we get pure martensite. So what is martensite and what are its properties? So on this diagram, we have three different structures for steel. On the left hand side, we have our body centre cubic steel, which we refer to as our alpha steel. And that's going to be called ferrite. Now, when we heat that steel above the eutectoid temperature, it changes from body centre cubic to face centre cubic. And that's what we refer to as our gamma steel or austenite. Now when we quench cool austenite, or we call it very quickly, we get this third structure, which is body centre tetragonal. And this structure here is what we refer to as martensite. Now what you'll notice about the martensite structure is that it's actually elongated. So instead of being cubic and having the dimensions A, A and A equal to each other, as in the case of face centre cubic, we see that it's elongated because we have a square base, A, A, but we have a new height, C. Now the reason behind that is because when we quench cool the martensite, the carbon doesn't have time to diffuse out of the structure, and it actually gets trapped inside the structure here. So we end up with interstitial carbon atoms trapped within the structure. Normally that carbon would diffuse out, we would return to our ferrite structure, and the iron carbide would form separate layers. Recall that we would have layers of iron and iron carbide in alternating layers. But by quench cooling our austenite over on the right hand side, we've actually trapped interstitial carbon within the structure. So now we have our iron atoms and we have interstitial carbon trapped between. Now the effects of that, first of all we have an interstitial alloy which will increase hardness but we also have a less regular structure. The number of slip planes is going to reduce in that material. So what we actually get is an enhancement of the hardness of the material. So this material becomes very hard. Now there is a downside to this because not only does martensite become very hard, it also becomes very brittle. So we may have to undergo a further heat treatment process to relieve some of those internal stresses. The important thing here is quench cooling can be used when we want to produce a very hard steel product. And quench cooling is when we remove the heat from the steel very, very quickly.